Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show you another amazing creation of mine. It's been a few months since the last build, but or since the last video, but uh, it's because I've been building cool stuff. I joined the Redstone Development Foundation, as you can see by that guy there. Hey, it's Redstone Warrior. Say hi, everybody. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is an ALU, an Arithmetic Logic Unit. Let's get a nice uh, upper view of it. Uh, this is the calculator portion of a computer. Uh, it does addition, subtraction, uh, general number crunching. The basic principle is that two numbers go in. That's the inputs. Input A is in red. Input B is in yellow. And then one number comes out. And you I get to select which function is is done to those two numbers. Right now, I have addition being done. So we have 10 plus 7 equals 17. And I can also change this to subtraction. Yeah, I, have an, I have a list here uh, where... Nice. 0, 1, 0, 1 is a minus b. So I set it to that, and we have 10 minus 7 is 3. Hey, that's pretty good. So that's addition and subtraction. Ah, uh, but that's just arithmetic. This can do logic as well. You may remember that uh, old multifunction logic gate video I did. Well, I've, uh, I've come a long way since there. This unit can do addition and subtraction and all of those functions and more. But uh, I, I've actually only chosen 16 different uh, operations to uh, be part of this control interface because most of them actually aren't useful. The four logic functions I have are AND, OR, uh, AND NOT BE, and XOR. I think of these as selecting, uh, setting, resetting, and toggling. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's set this to AND. 1, 0, 0, 0. Yeah, and the pistons move around. Yeah, let's get some daylight here. Okay. So, for AND, what you want to do is... Yeah, you just have some nice numbers here. Yeah, one zero, one zero, one zero, one. Yeah, that, that's a nice thing. And it, and it selects only a por uh, only a portion of the above number to be displayed below. If I want to look at just uh, these three bits in the number, then I just select that, that, or and unselect those and. There you go. It's bit selection. This is a technique known as bit masking. It, well, yeah, that, that's the bit mask. And so oh, it selects which three bits are you looking at. But if you want to do more than look and want to actually turn bits on, uh, then you'll want something like or. And so now. I, wherever there's a 1 in the B, it just gets forced on. Yeah, good night, Redstone Warrior. And so you can do something useless, like just force them all off. That's uh, yeah, actually pretty useful. Useless. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's that's some of the logic. And... One of the more interesting logic ones is just toggling. Wherever there's a 1, or wherever B is a 1, it's the opposite state. It's actually symmetric, like A and B could be swapped, and you'd get the same result, but it's... Eh. It's good to think of A as the data, is the, as the data and B as the manipulation. Uh, yeah. So, you can do arith arithmetic and logic, but it can also do 
shifting. Uh, there's a difference between divide by two and shift right. I, I, I haven't included shift left because uh, let because you can do that with just addition. If you have a number like five and you want to shift that left, so you have zero one zero one and you want to shift that left, if you just add it to itself, uh well, there you go, because shift left is the equiv is the same as doubling. So five plus five is ten. Or five shift left is ten. It's the same thing. But you, it's not quite as e easy for shift right. So for that, you need something a little more special. And okay, shift right. What's that? Ah, hey, one 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 one. There we go. And so now the output is whatever the input is, but moved one bit to the right. This is the equivalent of dividing by two. So doubling and halving are very useful operations to have in an ALU because, well, it this is as close as you can get to multiplication without having a full-out algorithmic multiplying circuit, which those are ridiculously complicated. They make adders look simplistic because they use adders as subcomponents. And yeah, that's... I, I have a full adder in there, but it would be like, if this was doing multiplication, it would be like 10 times as big, it would be slower, so... Uh, yeah, shifting is uh, what I, I like to think of as poor man's division, or poor man's multiplication. It's if you only have a limited amount of speed or hardware to spare, then you just use shifting. But there's there can be a little problem with shifting. Like uh, in some num in some number systems, uh, where yeah, I in two's complement, this is a negative number. Uh, yeah, that this is this would be like a negative. I think that's negative four. Yeah, yeah, I think that's negative four. But dividing, but if I want to divide that by two, uh, that's that's not negative two. So I have to do a slightly different operation, which is what's known as an arithmetic shift. But I have it labeled here as divide by 2. What it does is, if the first bit is a 1 and you shift, it stays a 1. So it preserves negativity when dividing. OK, so that's the basic prince. Oh, no, no, wait. I forgot to show you the really awesome thing here. It tells you if the statement is true. Well, yes. Does A equal B? It looks like it, and it says true. That's pretty nice. What it does is it subtracts. It's just subtraction. It's subtraction, but it looks, but it has, but it then uh, uses a bit of extra circuitry to, to determine whether a certain condition is met or not. So it can do equals, not equals. Uh, less than and greater than or equal. So let's see if... Yep, that's greater than or equal to... Now nah, let's do less than. A is not less than B. Uh, but, but if it is less than B... No, that's greater than. Uh, if B is more than A... Then, subtraction yields a negative number. That's negative 1 there. And the circuitry, uh, I have circuitry set up which can recognize whether a number is negative or not. And so, uh, basically, I, yeah, this checks. But one of them checks if the, an the answer is 0 or not 0. One, an one checks if, it's, if the answer is negative or not negative. And that's... That's how the if statements are done. And in the CPU itself, I'll have conditions for like, okay, if this is true, then jump to instruction line number whatever. So that, that'll 
that allow that will allow for what's known as branching, uh, which let which allows me to do if then state if then statements and loops and stuff. Uh, there are two functions on here which the ALU doesn't actually handle, which are yeah load value and jump set. Mm. Now, what those are are just th those are for the CPU itself. No math is done on the numbers. It just it it loads a value in directly and stores it in memory. It's yeah, no, the, the input is the output. It, it it's not particularly it's not an ALU function, but my, since my CPU is going to be using this uh, this a this ALU to do its math, I needed to uh, keep some slots free to do because I, I want to keep my CPU is just going to have sixteen different functions. And yeah, so I narrowed it down to the sixteen useful ones I could think of. Okay, so uh, the way this that handy little control panel works is it connects to wires here, which connect to a binary decoder. And depending on what that setting is, uh, one of the lines turns off. Uh, let's I'll set it to subtraction because that's an interesting one. So subtraction. Uh, this line is deac is off, which means its torches can turn on. And these torches then lead into the control bits. This one inverts the B input. And this one uh, adds one to what to whatever to the op to the computation in progress. A combination of inversion and adding one yields subtraction. I'm not going to go into why that is, that just is. And so all all of these, every function that this ALU does has a distinct, has a unique pattern of these these lines being on or off. And what these go into the ALU itself and tweak tweak parts of it, yeah, and tell it how to tweak the, the operation, yeah, how to tweak its internal functions to do very specific things. Some are obvious and understandable, such as invert A or invert B. Uh, or shift right. That, that's fairly understandable. Some are more esoteric, uh, such as the, the, al the always famous disconnect XNOR and force carry to backpropagate. Yeah, everyone knows what that does. I mean, right? It's obvious. Okay, it's not it's not obvious what it does, but it's necessary to change. Uh, it's something I have to do to change from addition to logic. And it it governs these pistons and these the pistons go down there and sever wires and do all sorts of interesting things. So yes, uh, every every function is a combination of uh, all of all of these different control bits uh, in either a one or zero state. Ah yes, th this white line here detects whether all of the bits are zero. So it, it detects equality. It detects if a minus b equals zero. So this line, it's one giant OR gate. The line only turns off when every single one of these is off. That's currently not the case, so yeah. And then this one, it's just a wire that t that goes from the top bit and tells you whether the number is negative or non-negative. And so the white and purple feed into, the, into this and it, this selects whether you pay attention to uh, whether purple goes through or white goes through. So it's multiplexer. And then green here determines whether whether you're actually checking for true false statements. Yeah, whether you're actually checking that or not. Because uh, otherwise there'd be no different 
uh, otherwise if you every any time you tried to subtract you'd uh you'd say the statement's true or the statement's false and that could interfere with your computation so you have to have you have to separate subtraction from the functions themselves i uh, uh, yeah, this device is known as a lookup table, where yeah, just a few inputs go in, and uh, and at each section it it tells you what outputs come out. It's uh, when you can't uh, simplify it into simple logic. You just need this means that this just turns into that. Trust me. It's it's a form of read-only memory, but I'll. That's, I think that's for a different video. Yeah, that's an overview of this arithmetic logic unit. Uh, ooh, I want to show you something cool. Uh, oh, you may, maybe you already saw it, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, propagation... Yeah, that's the ripple carry. It takes time for the... When you, for bits to for changes at the low end to, to at the low end to make it to the high end. Now, down here is something a little more interesting. You thought the ALU was big. Hey. <laughs> this is this is going to be the CPU that I'm building. It's the AL right now it's the ALU connected to memory. That's a nice big array of memory. That's 15 registers, 15 bytes of memory. Pretty awesome. But it's actually what's more awesome is that uh this kind of this kind of RAM you can read from two locations at once. It has two each cell has two outputs. But that's for a different video. Yeah, okay. I think I think I've talked about everything I'm going to for this one. And I, I so over there, you'll see something. I, I recorded a video about that uh, two weeks ago, which I'll have up soon. So yeah, Hans Lemerson signing out.